How does one transition from living as a tennis superstar to ending up behind bars? As horrifying as that sounds, you should know that such was the fate of German former world number one tennis superstar Boris Becker, who suddenly found himself in jail on tax evasion charges. Remember what they say about one day or night being able to change the entire plight of someone? Well, Boris Becker's life witnessed a huge transition in one day, and in today's video, we'll tell you how it all went down. Let's get into it, shall we? In 1985, at the age of 17, Becker became the youngest ever winner of the men's singles Wimbledon Championships title. As a result of his enviable talent, Becker is regarded as one of the greatest tennis players to walk the earth and was included in the list of the top 1040 players in 2006 to mark the publication's 40th anniversary. In total, Becker received 64 medals, including an Olympic gold medal. 49 singles and 15 doubles championships were won by Becker, who also won 13 Masters titles, 3 year-end championships, and 6 Grand Slam singles titles, including 3 Wimbledon championships, 2 Australian Opens, and 1 US Open. Becker also led Germany to back-to-back -back Davis Cup championship victories in 1988 and 1989. With his lightning-fast serves and explosive all-court style, which included acrobatic dives, rolls, and crushing service returns, Becker is often credited with being the father of power tennis. He is also one of the top 10 tennis players ever in terms of ATP win percentages. Becker received Player of the Year honors from both the ATP and the ITF in 1989. Having examined his tennis history, it's safe to say that Becker, who has a winning percentage of 92.70% and a win-loss record of 38-3 and has won two championship victories for Germany, is possibly the greatest Davis Cup singles player ever. While recalling the details of a match he played against Becker in the late 1980s, Andre Agassi noted in his autobiography that Becker was the most well-known tennis player in the world. As a tennis analyst and media celebrity, Becker remained in the spotlight even after his playing career ended, so all his new endeavors were covered by the media. The public was kept in the loop about his newest pursuits, including three years of coaching Novak Djokovic, his decision to venture into professional poker, and his employment with an online poker organization. In December of 2013, tennis legend Boris Becker joined the coaching team of Novak Djokovic and became his head coach. As one of the best tennis players in history, Becker entered the team as Novak's head coach and joined Marian Vaja, Miljan Amanovic, and Gebhard Phil Gritz. To travel with the world number one, Djokovic, to the Australian Open, Dubai, Miami, Monte Carlo, Rome, Roland Garros, Wimbledon, Cincinnati, US Open, Shanghai, Paris, and London. Back then, when asked how he felt about being coached by Becker, Novak stated, I am truly excited to have the opportunity to work with Boris. He is a true legend, someone who has great tennis knowledge and his experience will help me win new trophies from the Grand Slam and other tournaments. Becker is a great person too, and I am sure he will fit into our team in the best possible way. Boris brings a new fresh approach, and together with Vaja, he will make a winning combination. Seeing how he was also in the spotlight, Becker too was asked about how he felt to coach Djokovic, and he said, I am proud Novak has invited me to become his head coach. I will do my best to help him reach his goals, and I'm sure we can achieve great things together. Under Becker's guidance, Djokovic won his seventh Grand Slam title at Wimbledon the following July. Ever since he retired in 1999, news started to spread that Boris Becker was struggling with his finances, and in 2017, he seemed to have reached rock bottom. Due to an unpaid debt that had been outstanding since 2015, Becker was declared bankrupt in 2017. In June of 2017, Becker submitted a bankruptcy petition to a London court. He owed what The Guardian estimated to be about £3.3 million at the time to the private banking company Abarthnot Latham & Company. He allegedly overshot the payback window in 2017 and asked the bank to postpone legal action against him for 28 days. He wanted to sell his Mallorca house at that time to help pay off some of the debt. Christine Durrett, the court's registrar, however, rejected the plea. She infamously described Mr. Becker saying he had his head in the sand. The information available indicated that Becker moved huge amounts of money from his business account to other accounts, including those of his ex-wives, Lily and Barbara. Becker was found guilty of failing to disclose debt of $866,500, shares in a software company, and hiding property in Germany. According to Becker, a pricey divorce from his first marriage, child support obligations, and lifestyle choices reduced his career savings by about $50 million. Additionally, he said that he was astonished and humiliated by his 2017 bankruptcy filing. 
In addition to nearly $1 million in penalties stemming from convictions for tax evasion and attempted tax evasion in Germany, the former tennis player owed $5.1 million to Swiss authorities. As regards whether or not Becker made any effort to gather funds, the tennis superstar did try to. In June of 2018, left with no other choice, Becker held an auction to sell some of his properties. The former tennis superstar was hoping to raise money to repay his debts by selling memorabilia from his playing days. The items up for sale included trophies and kits. In all, he had about 82 items up for sale. The most expensive of his properties, which Becker sold, was his U.S. Open trophy from 1989, a trophy he won by beating Ivan Lendl in the final. The prize trophy was sold in July 2019 for 150,250 pounds. Becker also managed to sell a replica of his Davis Cup trophy he had won in the past for £52,100. Overall, the auction was able to fetch him £680,000. Insolvency Act accusations against Becker resulted in his conviction in April of 2017. The maximum sentence was seven years in jail. Twenty further allegations against the famous tennis player were dropped, including nine counts of failing to return career-related awards and medals. After two weeks of hearing, the Southwark Crown jurors found Becker guilty of concealing debts and failure to disclose his state and property. According to prosecutor Rebecca Chackley, the jury had found that the tennis legend had acted deliberately and dishonestly. She added, even now, Mr. Becker is still seeking to blame others when it was his duty. Armed with the knowledge that the maximum sentence the tennis superstar could face was pegged at seven years, Judge Deborah Taylor, the judge who handled the case, ruled that Becker would serve half the maximum number of years. Judge Taylor made this decision because she was of the opinion that the former tennis player was not remorseful for his actions. While speaking to Becker about his previous conviction for tax evasion in Germany, Judge Taylor said, You did not heed the warning you were given and the chance you were given by the suspended sentence. And that is a significant aggravating factor. You have sought to distance yourself from your offending and your bankruptcy. While I accept your humiliation as part of the proceedings, there has been no humility. Judge Taylor further said, you have lost your career and reputation and all of your property as a result of your bankruptcy. After learning that he was set to serve time behind bars, Becker became desperate, so desperate that he tried to escape his jail term using falsehoods. The Germans' assertion of diplomatic immunity was the most shocking of such dishonest acts. In April of 2018, Becker claimed the Central African Republic, CAR, a landlocked nation in Central Africa, had named him the sport and culture attaché to the European Union. The head of staff for the CAR Foreign Ministry, however, informed AFP that Becker's diplomatic passport was a fake. He added that the serial number on Becker's passport was from a batch that had been stolen in 2014. He further alleged that the Germans' purported position with the CAR doesn't exist. It is also worth pointing out that several people have claimed diplomatic immunity from the CAR to avoid punishment in Europe. After his attempts to escape jail time proved futile, Boris served a total of eight months behind bars before being released early on December 15. He was immediately deported to Germany by UK officials. Becker attempted to make the most of his brief time in prison by working as a classroom assistant and creating awareness about the advantage of exercise and diet, as reported by the German tabloid Bild. According to Bild, Becker was even taught 45 prisoners a unique form of yoga and meditation. Becker, in an interview, stated that on the day of his release, he was excited to finally be leaving the prison and going home. In an interview granted by the former tennis superstar after his release from prison in the UK, he took time out to share his memories from jail. After being released, he was deported back to Germany, where he later said to German television viewers, in prison, I was a nobody. The former Wimbledon champion told the broadcaster Sat1 that while he was incarcerated, he was not called by his first name and that no one cared about his championship status. When appearing in public after his release, the former Wimbledon champion seemed slimmer and had a new hair color and style. Although he was very opposed to serving time behind bars, Becker claimed to have used his 231 days in jail to reflect on his life and regain his minch, or human side. Still speaking on his experience behind bars, Becker added that the food was poor and the servings were too little in Wadsworth Prison in London, where he had spent the first few weeks. He also said that there weren't many recreation opportunities. On the darker side of things, the German revealed that he had witnessed a great deal of violence while in prison. He also opened up about how other inmates tried to kill him when he was appointed to teach sports science as a classroom assistant while still in jail. The reporter for Bild observed that Becker appeared humble, had altered the color of his hair, 
and had shredged several pounds. He described him as being remarkably cool-headed. Describing his excitement to finally leave prison, Becker said, from six o'clock that morning, I sat on the edge of my bed and hoped that the cell door would open. They came to get me at 7.30 a.m., unlocked the door and asked, are you ready? I said, let's go. I had already packed everything beforehand. Boris Becker returned to work as a tennis pundit barely a month after he was released from prison. He seemed to have no problem picking up where he left off, and now he is set to cover the 2023 Australian Open. One of the managers of Warner Brothers, Discovery's German subsidiary, which owns Eurosport, Jochen Gund, said, I am delighted that Boris Becker is returning to our team at the Australian Open. Since 2017, Boris had been an integral part of the tennis broadcast on Eurosport. Boris Becker is now a free man, and we hope he remains free for a longer time. What are your thoughts on Becker's fall from grace? If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot. Until next time.